The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, all right, you know, sometimes I get these little ideas, uh, like little bits of advice, and then I forget about them. I start doing the video and then I go into whatever topic I'm to. And uh, I forget them, and I for like I forget to bring them out at some point in the video. So I'm going to give you this one. And granted, this isn't really for most of who are listening right now. This is for my kids, who long after I'm dead are like, we should probably reconnect with our father, who we haven't seen in like 30 years, because he died of alcohol poisoning. And they, they listen to these videos, and they, they get advice. So I'm going to give them this bit of advice. If you're ever in a metro town, you know, Atlanta, Dallas, uh, St. Louis, and there's a business that has gold in the title, like Gold Lounge or Gold Massage Parlor, it's a it's a prostitution place. That's what it means. Gold equals prostitute. Like, like, I swear to God, like a lot of you are like, what the hell? I guarantee you, a couple of you are like, yep, I understand. That's true. If you go to Atlanta and you go down like Buckhead, kind of, you know, that kind of main area, um, you if if it's got gold in the title, there's a one hundred percent chance it's prostitution. Just, just put that out there. Okay, on that note, um, <laughs> I like to appeal to the smallest possible audience. That is that is what I do. Um, anyway, let's see what we got. Perch. All right. I don't get why you do not talk about DC and Marvel animated cartoons like Bruce Tim DC Animated Universe and Marvel's animated series like Spectacular Spider-Man and Earth's Mightiest Heroes. If you really want your daughter like superhero media, you should show these cartoons rather than making them stupid modern American comics. Lots of love. I, I've talked about this before. I, Sorry, I have. I have talked about this before. I, I, I tell you right now, the smartest thing for Warner to do are uh, Warner Media, Marvel. Like, don't hire James Gunn. The odds of James Gunn being able to produce something that is truly a kind of groundbreaking billion dollar movie it's astronomically low. You're going to dick around trying to do a lot of things. You're not going to get there. The smartest thing you can do is go all in on animation. Copy what Pixar did for Disney and do that. Like become the Pixar of comic book movies. Get some good quality voice actors. It's going to extend the life of the people who are playing those characters. And then just go for that super hyper animation. Try that. But a lot of the animated movies are good. They're, they're good. I, I don't deny it. I, I've talked about this before, so I, I won't talk about it again, but it's true. All right, we're going to go to another mail. It's here. It says, hey, Perch, enjoy the video on the overuse of miniseries by Marvel and DC instead of committing to the ongoing titles. It reminded me of two things. Number one, the best miniseries I enjoyed were special events based on the ongoing. Arthur Adams as Guardian Wars. Eh, I don't. I disagree. That was the uh, Asgardian Wars were the two annuals, the New Mutants, the Uncanny X Men annuals. It was out of continuity. I mean, it, like Claremont set it up fine, but it wasn't exactly like tied to an event. I don't. I don't. I disagree. Paul Smith X Men versus Al Flight, same thing. Again, set up well, fit with the main continuity, not part of it. Um, Denny O'Neill Batman Sword of Azrael, same thing. Um. Uh, Arizello, Batman, Deathblood. Okay, that last one's a little bit strange compared to the others, but that's okay. None of these were based on events, or at least you're calling them events. I, I, That's not what I would call them, and that's fine. You don't have to call them what I call them, but these were areas, I think, very different. This is where the miniseries was connected to continuity of the main series, and it was kind of like an extra or a bonus. Like, hey, we're going to get Arthur, Arthur Adams to do some stuff in, you know, Asgard with the main X-Men characters. And it's it's a good story, but bonus, we're also going to get Arthur Adams to draw several of the uh, New Mutants and X-Men characters in super skimpy Asgardian-like metal bikinis. And, I mean, come on. Let's all stop pretending that we're like... I, I was, um, I remember years ago in the comic shop talking to a person by, he's like, I really liked Arthur Adams' style. It really had kind of a Norse kind of mythology feel. It really kind of had this Celtic kind of design. And, you know, Chris Claremont's writing was really top-notch. And Yeah, that's all true. Also, boobs. 
Like, come on, let's 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 not let's not forget that when Arthur Adams is doing it ongoing, he would draw care like you didn't care about the pairing. This is a crazy thing about Adams. J. Scott Campbell is the same way, by the way. You could be reading a comic, you don't really care about, you know, it's like Doug Ramsey and Ray. Uh, okay, I guess. But Arthur Adams is drawing you like, I want to see Doug Adam, sorry, Doug Ramsey. Fuck that girl. I was like, that, that just, he did, he, he was great with that. Again, several of you right now are, are listening to this going, yep, I know exactly what he's talking about. And I want you to speak up in the comments. You don't have to, you don't have to go into the detail I'm going in, but I, I, I need that thumbs up, nod, emoji, whatever you want to do. It's true. Arthur Adams, I, he, he did great cheesecake. You know, lots of people will talk about, um, I don't know, Beach Moloko, a variety of, uh, uh, Beach Moloko is a terrible example, actually, of this. But there's lots of um, Merca uh, artists who do kind of good cheesecake stuff, the Dotsons, uh, fine. Uh, but God damn it, Arthur Adams was great at that. Those women were stacked and just, it was wonderful. Anyway, back to the mail. It says, an event from uh, these, then filtered back into ongoing titles. Okay, I get it. You don't mean events like events. You mean events like plot. The plots from these limited series would then stick with continuity. I totally agree with you. Number two, ongoing titles like long-running shows on television, they allow the audience to spend more time with characters and build a following. We can see this with Friends, Suits, Law & Order. If they have been short six to eight episodes at their launch, they are likely to have developed into the popular shows they are now recognized as. I agree with that, and your point is 100% correct. But by the way, if you want a horrific experience, and you happen to have access to uh, HBO Max or Max or whatever the hell it's called right now, the uh, H Max, if you have access to Max, I ask, uh, do the following. Get yourself a beer or a glass of whiskey. Sit down with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it happens, and watch the final episode of Friends. It is awful. Like the the jokes suck. Everything like you're watching this thing, wondering like you, you just watch the final episode of some of these series. You you do not understand how the hell anyone is giving anyone money in this scenario. It is it is baffling. I um I, I sat down on the couch and I watched Friends, the last episode of Friends with my wife. And Mrs. Perch uh, was, uh, we both watched that thing in stony silence. That's the best way to describe it. We, we, were, we were watching that show and both of us were like, what in the fuck are we watching right now? This is not funny. The characters are, are old. The jokes, like, it, it, it aged terribly. Terrible. Um, anyway, I, I defy you to watch that show. It is it is hands down terrible. Anyway, uh, it is, sorry, back to the myth. Um, it says, uh, and then we list some names here. It says Peter David, Denny O'Neill, Chris Claremont, Ann Nascenti, Gail Simone. They all told very different stories, but they each could convey a character in development without everything being fight. Um, and reading consecutive issues of a title that they wrote was very satisfying. Um, I'll miss your videos and commentary when you sign up. Greatly enjoy seeing you hear your thoughts and getting a sense of the character. Take care and be well. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I agree. The, the, the point you're making here is that Peter David, Denny O'Neill, Gail Simone, and Ascenti, radically different writers... Um, I'm not saying this because this is popular on the internet to do so, and I know a lot of people take the shit out of Gail Simone, and Gail Simone, in fairness, has asked for it by and large with some of her goofy ass takes. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not denying any of that. But I don't think Gail Simone is kind of at the same level as the rest of those people that you're mentioning. And I'm saying that from the perspective of, um, yeah, I'm, I'm using what you said in your mail, which was. Share, you know, writers who would write an ongoing series, but then do things to kind of tee up a mini series or an event or something that gave the entire series more depth, more complexity, and everything else. And I, I don't, I, I would not put uh, Gail Simone 
in that bracket. Um, mainly, you know, I, I'm not even saying that from the standpoint of whether she's a, a good author or not. I'm saying it from the perspective of I don't think she really has. Um, I, I don't. I don't think she has that credibility to really make that call. Um, I, I, you know, I, I just don't think. I don't think she really does. So, anyway, um, you know, the thing about miniseries is that once upon a time, I do believe that the miniseries was kind of, uh, it was it was designed to help the ongoing series. And so that was the whole kind of premise and function of it, was that if we do it right, it's going to be a kind of a big comic, it's going to help the overall sales, it's going to do a lot for the, the greater good of that comic. And today, the miniseries feels like, A, we've got a movie coming out, and uh, fuck it, um, let's put out an Ant-Man comic because we should. And nobody really seems to know what to do with that. I don't think they really, um, I, I don't think it means much. I don't think anybody really cares. And I think the people who are kind of creating the comic, soliciting and putting it together, I don't think any of them really care about the long-term consequences of what they're doing. I think it's more just, you know, a movie is coming out, we probably should put a comic out, I don't know, somebody at Disney is going to get mad at us. No. And so they vomit out a comic that is never intended to be anything more than, you know, protecting someone's ass from a corporate level if they ask, why do we have a movie out and not a comic out? That's how it feels. Um, if you tied it into continuity, if you actually made it like part of a bigger picture, I think it would be, it'd be quite great. Um, today, there's a big narrative uh, within people who work in comics that if you tie the comic too much to continuity, you're isolating new readers. You know, new readers can't pod. They're too stupid to possibly, in any way, kind of figure out their puny, kind of peanut-sized brains what it means to, uh, you know, have a comic that is a part of a continual story. So they always do these things that are, like, easy, accessible, in and out. But the, the consequence of that is none of these comics really matter. And people can sense it, they can feel it, and that's more or less what we get. But anyway, um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And uh, fuck it, let's just keep this channel going for another 10 years. What do you say? Thanks for listening.